Okay, thank you, Katie. Well, You're good welcome. afternoon, everyone, and Happy New Year. We'll bring to order the Washoe County Open Space and Regional Parks Commission meeting for Tuesday, January 5th, 2021. Um, we'll start with roll call. Stephanie Chen. Present. Heidi Anderson. Present. Doug Doolittle. Sorry, present. Thank you. Thomas Gwynn. Absent. Darla Lee. Present. Chris Nenzel. Absent. Jennifer Oliver. Present. Greg Shorts. Present. Looks like we have a quorum. Thank you. Okay, we'll go ahead and um, do the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, I think everyone did that with their mics off. Thank you. Um, do we have any public comments? I did not see any public comment. Okay, thank you, Katie. Um, item four, approval of the agenda for the Open Space and Regional Parks Commission meeting of January 5th, 2021. Doug Doolittle moved to approve. Very short second. Can we get a motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion passes, thank you. Item five, approval of the minutes for the Open Space and Regional Parks Commission meeting of December 1st, 2020. Any additions or corrections? None, okay. Can we get a motion? Great shorts, motion to approve. Jennifer Oliver, second. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion passes. Thank you. Item six, acknowledgement and recognition of park operations staff for their outstanding service and contributions to Washoe County. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, for the record, Colleen Wallace Barnum. Um, I would like to recognize, it's always fun to do these, uh, Brian Harrower. Uh, Brian is um, here today as part of the Zoom meeting. Uh, Brian uh, got his certificate um, of 15 years of service uh, in December, the middle of December. So uh, Brian, there he is. Uh, congratulations on making it halfway through. Thank you very much. <laughs> Downhill slope, right? Yes. Um, and Brian, I just want to let everybody know, Brian started with Washoe County um, as a seasonal lifeguard. There he is. He just showed his <laughs> um, But yeah, he started as a lifeguard um, and worked out at Bowers Pool for several seasons um, and then was a seasonal ranger for a period of time and, um, and then got hired on full time in 2005. Right, Brian? And I yes. believe uh, Brian and I worked together out of Rancho San Rafael Park for about six months. Um, and then I moved on and then he was stayed at Rancho, but he's worked at, um, at uh, Rancho San Rafael, at Bartley Ranch Regional Park. Um, and then he managed both Davis Creek uh, Park and Bowers Mansion Park, and then was promoted to a district manager. So um, thank you so much for your dedicated service for the last 15 years. Brian's been a part of uh, many of our of our um, ranger staff traditions over the years, and um, it's it's great to see you um, acknowledged today. And congrats again on your 15 years. Well, thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Uh, this is after you know 25 years of uh, total service. It's definitely uh, feels like family around here. So I, I really do appreciate it, and thank you for for all the opportunities that I've had over the years. Hi, and this is Doug Doolittle. Thank you. Congratulations. It's a it's a long road, but you've you've done a great job in every aspect of uh, your work. Uh, every position you've held, you've held credibly and, and been an excellent employee. So thanks for everything that you do, especially working with the volunteers. You've you've really exceeded in that that fashion. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Yes, thank you, Brian, and congratulations to 15 years of service. That's great. Thank you. I do appreciate it. 
Congratulations, Brian. Thank you. I'll throw my congratulations in there as well. It's great to have employees that uh, love their job so much. Well, it's, uh, it's, you know, this is home. Washoe County has been home to me for my whole life, and uh, it's been a pleasure to be able to serve the community here. Congratulations, Brian. I know our staff at the Parks Foundation loves working with you, um, so mm -hmm. we're so glad you're here. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. We'll go ahead and move on to item seven, presentation, discussion, and possible recommendation to the Board of County Commissioners to direct staff with the District Attorney's Office assistance to begin stage two of the unsolicited proposal policy by completing all necessary documents, including leases and a term sheet for the proposal from Maz Golf Management for the continuation of golf operations at Wild Creek Golf Course. <laughs> Good afternoon, commissioners. This is Dave Solero, assistant county manager. Um, back in January of 2016, the Board of County Commissioners approved an unsolicited proposals policy. And this was really a policy uh, set of guidelines for Washoe County staff to utilize when um, someone from the community wanted to utilize either um, you know, county property or create a, a program to help the community um, utilizing county, um, any of the county resources. Um, so in this instance, this is a, a county owned land, as you'll all recall, uh, Washoe County took possession of the Wild Creek Golf Course around the time that the um, uh, Washoe County School District began uh, breaking ground on the Hug High School now uh, going on up there at the golf course. And we've operated it uh, for a little over a year in uh, some uh, Oh, turbulent times, I would say. A couple of different operators. Uh, currently, um, Maz Golf uh, Management is the operator out there on the on the side on a limited basis. Um, but Washoe County staff received a proposal from um, from Maz Golf uh, for the use of Wild Creek Golf Course uh, for some pretty dynamic things moving into the future. And so part of this process is uh, for staff to review uh, what we call stage one, and that's the information that was provided with your packet as far as all of the information on why this is good for our community, what the community gets for it, what the, you know, the operator's role is, the partnerships that the operator has. Uh, and this is really a, a, a potential way for Washoe County then to operate this golf course in a sustainable fashion into the future. Um, so that, that being said, I, I wanted to bring this uh, forward to the Open Space and Park Commission to, to gain your concurrence to bring this forward to the Board of County Commissioners to really start phase two, which is to get into the meat and potatoes of this proposal and really understand the business case, uh, verify that this is going to be a sustainable product for us, make sure that we are you know, going to provide exactly what uh, Mass Golf Management wants to provide for the community and that this is a good thing for our community. So with that, I'd actually like, it to, like to turn it over to uh, Mr. Mazzaferi. Uh, Mike Mazzaferi is here. He's got a presentation for you. And if you don't have any questions related to the, um, the proposal or the, sorry, the uh, unsolicited proposal pro policy, uh, then I suggest we go on to Mike and have him uh, present to you the, uh, this proposal. Thank you, Dave. I, I think I unmuted myself there. I don't know if you can hear me. Um, and I think I might have control of this PowerPoint slide. I got three screens in front of me and just me getting them all on was a, a good deal for me. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna work you through a little PowerPoint here. Thank you um, for allowing me to come to the uh, Open Space and Parks Commission. Um, this is part of the process of the unsolicited proposal as, as Dave said. And, and I've got some slides here I'm gonna work through and what I'd like to do is get through them and then answer questions at the end. and. Um, see you know see, see where we end up with it so on my one of my screens i think uh i think i have control of the the slide presentation i'm not sure i'm going to change to the second slide did everybody see that mike we we still see you so okay. when you pull up the screen share and and find the uh oh, okay the, the, whichever image you'd like to share then there's okay. a little button where you have to uh -huh. share screen share so does one of them have the PowerPoint on it? I don't know. It should. Did you did you find the the green share screen? Yeah, option? yeah, I've yeah. got it. And then you know it pulls up usually a menu of different items okay. that you have up on your desktop. Yeah, I think there you go. I think I'm there now. Does everybody see the the PowerPoint now? 
Not yet. So once oh. you hey, please, hold on. I, you want, I got three screens here. So, so. so once you pick the one that you want yeah. on that um, share screen menu, th there we go. Okay, I think I'm there now. So we're looking at a um, PowerPoint slide notes. Yep. Okay. So that's the, that's the wrong screen. So <laughs> I'm, I'm getting closer. <laughs> You're getting there. Hey, Mike, would, there. Mike, this is, this is Dave. Would you like me to share my screen and maybe that, uh, yeah, you can be easier for through, you. You can just yeah. go through yours. Yeah. All right. Oh, you're going to have to stop sharing your screen. Yeah, I got it. Oh, stop share. Okay. There you go. Okay. There you go. And I will share mine. So that should be your PowerPoint. So we're on slide one. Does everybody see slide one? Yes. Perfect. All right, Mike, go ahead and you just cue me and so, I will kick yeah, it to next. So basically, Dave, I'm gonna, can I interrupt real quick? Sure. It's still, it shows the enable editing. Sure. Perhaps if you do the slideshow from the beginning, then the slides will progress so that we can see it. So, oh, sure, you're going to make me uh, really get into this. <laughs> Otherwise, they don't progress usually. If you hit the enable that oh, button on the top, it. there. Dave. Oh, there. Perfect. Thank you. Got it. Great job. And, and by the way, congratulations to all of you for even doing meetings like this. This isn't that easy. So, Anyway, this is uh, the proposal to Washoe County for the continuation of golf at Wild Creek. When Maz Golf took over, we, we wanted to, to find a path to how we could keep golf at Wild Creek and what we could, you know, create on this site. And, and obviously this is, this proposal is coming from First Tee and Maz Golf Management. There's been a lot of discussion be, between Maz Golf and First Tee and, and we, both entities uh, feel that this is the right path for this, and uh, and and here we are. So, the the third slide, um, Dave, is it's just a little history about Wild Creek. I think everybody knows Wild Creek's been there 40 years and been operated by the RSCVA. Has a lot of history, you know. In '83, '84, and '85, they the early days of the Senior Tour, they hosted the Gatlin Brothers Golf Classic, which was a very big deal for golf in our community. Um, Important thing, they had several big droughts. They, they installed a pipeline in the 90s from the, the Greg Street treatment plant all the way to Wild Creek and, and runs through Sparks. So there's reclaimed water to the site, which was an important factor. Um, RSCBA leased operations at Wild Creek, uh, they operated it for 37 or eight years. And in, I think 2017, they leased operations or 18 to Duncan Golf Management. So Going on to the next slide here, just a couple dates of reference. In February of 19, uh, the county transferred uh, the Wild Creek, or the RCVA transferred the Wild Creek property to Washoe County. And then shortly thereafter, uh, the Washoe County Commission approved sale of a portion of the land to Washoe County School District. And I think all of you know about that. Obviously, they're building a high school there on 87 acres. Uh, Duncan Golf Management continued to manage until the, the closures, uh, all the golf courses in, in uh, the state were closed in April, pretty much the whole month of April, and um, Duncan Golf opted out of their contract, and uh, golf course remained closed until July 1st, when uh, in June, basically, uh, the county commission and my company, Maz Golf, entered into a short-term agreement, so we could get in there, get it back open to the public. And it opened as a six hole regulation course, which was the first five holes of the the old golf course, the regulation course and the ninth hole. And then the par three course is still existing. So we got it open July 1st and we did some, what we felt were very conservative projections and we've exceeded those. And um, I, Maz Golf and the county partnered and, and we actually netted some money for the golf enterprise fund. And um, we just put a nice check in the mail to the county. So what really we proved this summer was public golf is uh, sustainable. Sparks is starving for golf. There isn't much golf in Sparks. And this is kind of right on the border of Sparks and Reno. But anyway, we opened it July 1st, had a great summer. Um, it's still going pretty strong. During that time, um, my company and Brian Curley was a golf course architect. Uh, I brought in Brian and we came up with a plan that we feel could is, is very, very feasible. 
the county did do some plans back uh, um, last year, um, a company called Knott and Lynn, some golf course architects, and that plan didn't include a driving range. And personally, uh, knowing the area like I know it, we couldn't do what we wanted to do at the Wild Creek site without a driving range. So we went back to the drawing board and Brian Curley and I pretty much spent most of the summer and part of the fall designing, um, coming up with a new concept for the design. So Dave pretty much covered all this, the unsolicited proposal from First Tee of Northern Nevada and Maz Golf to Washoe County. It's really a three-step process and, and we're in the assessment process now. Is this something everybody feels like we can do? And uh, there, there's some certain criteria and objectives and, and we'd go on to stage two, which then would be an agreement and stage three, obviously you do the project. So in the assessment process of, of this, you know, the, the, this project really meets the definition of the unsolicited proposal. It's, as Dave said, it's really a, the private sector bring, bringing something to the county that makes sense for everybody. And, it, and it's using county assets, county land, county buildings, whatever it may be. And in this case, it's the private sector, my company and First Tee, a nonprofit bringing this proposal. And it meets the objectives of, of the unsolicited proposal and all the criteria. And, and, and I have the, the, or the policy, which was very well done by the county to make things like this have a path. And, and so that's kind of the assessment process. It's unique and it's innovative. Um, it's not likely that Washoe County could deliver the, this project because of the scope. Um, if, if you wanted to build what we're proposing that you build, it's gonna be in the seven, eight, nine million dollar uh, category. And, and to, to build it, do revenue bonds, publicly bid it all, it would, it's just not feasible. The, the, this type of golf can't support that kind of debt service and, and you can't just bond it. Um, these are revenue bonds where the facility income would have to pay back the bonds and it wasn't feasible. And combining these three entities, the county, Mads Golf, and First Tee, make this possible. And, and as we get farther along here, I'll, I'll explain. So in the um, strategic objectives and, and the Washoe County policy, you know, the mission, I like the mission of the Washoe County Open Space and Parks Commission, you know, to provide exceptional parks, open space, and recreational opportunities and, and their mission. And then of course the mission of Washoe County strategic plan working together regionally to provide and sustain a safe, secure and healthy community. Well, this project's right in the wheelhouse of both those mission statements. And it checks all the boxes in Washoe County's um, um, strategies and, and their, their objectives and goals in their strategic plan, which is f fiscal sustainability. This project will, once it's built, it's not going to have debt. It will um, sustain itself going into the future long after all of us are gone. Uh, the economic impacts, it's going to employ people. It's going to put a lot of uh, dollars into the community. It's going to uh, serve some vulnerable populations. First T, and I might add, Travis Hansen is on the call here, the president of that, of that board. You know, First T is a youth program that teaches life skills and golf, but it targets um, kids at risk, it tar kids in need, you know, it's a vulnerable population. And, you know, the, the other kind of teaching we'll do at this facility is things like PGA Hope or, you know, veterans programs where we work with veterans with PTSD, um, senior learn, seniors learning golf, all kinds of things that, you know, we can't so much do at other facilities because this place is going to be different than any of the other golf courses in the region. And innovative services, I think, as you see what we want to build, it's, it's very much innovative. So, okay, Dave. Um, so, you know, the benefit of this project, it does bring value to the community. I think particularly the neighborhood I don't know how many high schools will have golf around them, but this is going to be pretty spectacular for, should we bring this to, to, to fruition. You know, looking out the window of the high school, it's going to be like you're going to high school at the country club. But 
it will bring value to our community in, in the fact that it's going to provide a high level of affordable golf and uh, youth golf, education, public golf, all of those things bring value. And, you know, if somebody's looking to move here, a facility like this not only will serve them, it'll serve their kids, their family, and anybody else who wants to play. And, you know, I, I taught at Wild Creek, um, kind of a sidebar here in 89 and 90, I taught golf full time and it was probably one of the best couple of years of my career. I, I enjoyed it very much, but I taught classes for the University of Nevada then. And, and still today I have people coming up to me that said, hey, I took your class at University of Nevada. Um, and, and there's semester long classes that you really get a chance to put a club in somebody's hand and teach them the whole game, not just how to swing the club. They learn the etiquette and about the golf course and about the culture of golf. And, and nobody's doing that right now. Nobody has a facility really that could host those types of college classes and first tee classes. And the plan would be having University of Nevada and TMCC classes during the week, weekdays. And then after school, the kids from first tee come in there and do homework and go play golf and obviously do first tee programming on the weekends too. So this method, like I talked about before, is certainly less expensive than Washoe County doing it. First tee and Maz Golf partnering up. Um, you can take advantage of a design build type of format. It doesn't have to be publicly bid. There's a lot of things out in the golf industry as far as uh, golf course construction companies that do things, you know, at their cost for projects like this. And um, we've already had uh, multiple conversations with Patty Sheehan. We hope to build the Patty Sheehan Youth Center there as part of the First Tee program. And, uh, you know, when you pull all the connections we have in, um, we feel like we have the leadership. First Tee being the top chapter in the, the network and, and my 30 years of managing golf courses, I have, you know, really what I feel is an excellent, uh, you know, view of public golf in, in Washoe County. I've worked 30 years managing multiple golf courses in Washoe County, and I just, I know what we need. And so the need and support, you know, we de demonstrated the need. If you look at our numbers that at Sierra Sage over the last 10 years. And you look at just what we've done at Wash or Wild Creek with six holes and the par three course. They're, they're particularly in Sparks when the only thing Sparks has other than this Wild Creek is Kylie Ranch and um, Red Hawk. And, and Sparks is getting pretty big. There's really not much of an option there without driving across town. Um, first, he needs a home. Um, this being such a stellar chapter in the network. They don't have a home, they work out of office space. And, and that's unique in the first T on the national scene. Most of these first T chapters have a home base and some have their own golf courses. Some have space at golf courses. And, you know, the first T nationally is super excited at even the possibility that we can do this thing. They see all their Western trainings here. They see, uh, you know, big things for this, should we do anything that resembles what we're proposing. Um, the other thing that is important to, to understand is 99 holes of public golf in Washoe County have closed since 2006. And I managed Rosewood and Brookside in the 90s, that whole decade. And those places were so busy and so many new golfers came and everybody that learned golf went to Brookside. All those places are gone. And, uh, you know, we got to hold on to what we have. And, um, you know, that last bullet point there says growth of the game initiatives are not being met. And what that means is, particularly Washoe County, we're not keeping up with attrition, uh, the attrition as golfers age and, and, and quit the game and, and are no longer, you know, playing. We're not bringing new golfers fast enough. And, you know, a project like this that's going to bring many new golfers of all ages, kids, seniors, disabled people, you name it, um, helps everybody in the region. Um, you know, people don't just go join the country club. They, they go to a public course and go learn to play and get hooked, and then they go join the country club. So we need a, a place that supports growth of the game 
initiatives in a big way. And, and that's how we've proposed this design. The feasibility, you know, it's financially reachable, like I talked about, certainly sustainable long-term, um, managed decently, it's, it's gonna support itself forever. There's no question about that, um, especially in this location. A few cars will be driving by on this location. It's a high traffic area um, on the corner of uh, McCarran and, and Sullivan. Um, we see, you know, I think it's feasible because of this public, private, and nonprofit partnership. Um, I think it's the only way to do it. I, I don't think any other way would be um, as feasible. Um, I see this as a win for the county, a win for First Tee, a win for Maz Golf, because we have such passion for public golf, but mostly it's a win for the public golfers of this community. So, so here's the plan. Um, and you're going to see a rendering here in a second, um, a schematic of the layout, but the plan is to keep the existing par three course. We're going to move one tee box to make some room for the range tee. We would build a brand new driving range. And although there's a couple of holes that are very similar to the, 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 the part of the old front nine, we'd, we would literally build a new regulation nine hole course, new irrigation, new everything. Because, you know, you take a look at the irrigation at Wild Creek, for example, right now, and it's 40 years old, you know, and, and it's aging. And, and when, if we shut down the system and bring it up, it's kind of like Swiss cheese. It's plug all the leaks and hope we can water. So, that's the, that's the plan, and I'll talk about that briefly here in a second. So the path, how do we get there? Um, we're proposing, and, and the ask in the proposal is Washoe County deeds the buildings to First Tee. These buildings are old, they're aged. Um, the big clubhouse has pretty good bones, but they're built in the late 70s. And the, the infrastructure in the buildings is not in good shape. Um, so we're proposing they deed the buildings to First Tee. The remaining acreage where the golf course lies, we're proposing that the county leases that land on a, a long-term lease in a, and 99 years, something that, you know, we're not going to have to ever worry about. Um, when you invest this kind of money, the last thing we want is um, to have to renegotiate leases and things like that. Certainly, we, we would like um, the county to dedicate, dedicate the $3 million that the Washoe County School District paid for this land. And, uh, you know, when the county commission um, did the deal with Washoe County School District, they, they indicated that this money would be used for the um, rehabilitation or redesign of Wild Creek. And, and in the grand scheme of things, that's not very much money to fix a 40 year old golf course that's chopped up in pieces, but this plan that we have kind of uh, will, will reinvent it. Um, at that point, you know, first he will fundraise and, and they're in, in the public, public grant sector, private foundations, private grants, individuals, people that are, uh, are known to support first tee. Um, there's a lot of them out there. We've done some preliminary footwork, talk to, or leg work, I should say, talk to um, four or five foundations and a lot of individuals. And there's people that are willing to step up um, to the point where we've got a couple of foundations that have said, proceed, we got your back. Um, and once we have a, a deal with the county, we can initiate fundraising. And then first T would enter into an agreement with me, which we've had discussion on that already, that should this come together, they would hire my company to oversee the design, the construction, and then operate on, on a long-term basis. I'm an operator. I take care of public golfers. That's what I do. First T is a, a youth golf and life skill program. That's what they do. And everybody ends up doing what, what we feel like we can do pretty well. So... With that, I got a few slides here that just show, if you look at this picture on the bottom, that's McCarran Boulevard, um, Wedekin Road coming into McCarran there at the begin, at the middle of the bottom. And the par three course is on the lower left. And then Sullivan Lane is at the, the far left. We've um, placed the high school and the design of everything on it. Um, it's an 87 acre site that pretty much took out the driving range 
in uh, most all of the back nine, except for a few holes. And uh, the entrance to the high school will be up there on Sullivan. And uh, we've pretty much retooled just north of the par three course there. You see we're moving uh, uh, the ninth hole on the par three course, making room for the driving range tee. And that driving range tee is going uh, where the first and second holes were. And there were a couple of ponds down there. Those ponds would have held reclaimed water. And the way we've preliminary design of this range is like a big bathtub where it would hold water. And in the event, this high school sheds a lot of water off these parking lots and so forth, the storm water runoff um, it would be able to be controlled on site before it discharged onto Wetakin and Sullivan Lane there. And in this proposal, we also uh, would take out the reclaimed water and it would be below ground. There wouldn't be any reclaimed water above ground. And as far as the state goes and the players, the NDEP, the folks that handle that and oversee that, they're pretty happy that we wouldn't be storing reclaimed water above ground because it, it, they, it's really against state law to discharge it offsite. And if you have a big flood, it's gonna be offsite. Um, north of the driving range there, that's the, almost all new holes you'll see. The first hole starts at the clubhouse and goes down toward the old third green. The second hole of the plan is the old fourth hole, and that hole is the only hole that's kind of intact. And then you head north, back up three. Um, and then where the sixth hole was, there's two holes existing there, the fourth and the fifth hole. And then you're up on the hill. And Dave, if you could go to the next slide, I'll kind of show them a few um, pictures. And so the picture on the upper left is the view from the ninth tee or actually it's uh, in between the ninth tee and the eighth green current looking toward Reno and that's a beautiful sight. but on the right is what we're proposing that's the uh, fifth green on the lower left there that uh, that's the eighth green down on the lower right and the ninth and first fairways and on the other side of those trees is uh, the practice facility and par three courses. And then this next picture is just a uh, 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 as it is now, behind the current 6T, we're proposing a hole. There was nothing there currently, and there's plenty of space, a par three hole that goes due east. Um, and that is number um, four, one, two, three, four, five. And, uh, and then uh, the next slide is just uh, the old sixth hole, which was a very steep hill. We've slid it to the right, which is north. And the hole kind of is on level ground, nearly level ground. It's a short hole. And this area right there, <clears throat> excuse me, was really, I had it in my mind that we couldn't build nine holes there because of the steepness of this hill where the six, the current six hole was. And we managed to get two holes in there. And that's why we can get nine holes in now. And the next slide is just uh, the, the, after that hole, you go up on the hill and it, it, those holes, what you see in the upper left is the old 14th and 15th holes of the back nine. And we've got the, the, the sixth hole, basically tee boxes up on the hill and it's a big par four where you come off the hill and you play down to where 14 and 15 were and then turn back and head back toward the clubhouse. And these are just some some existing photos and what we've overlaid and artistic designs of the holes we'd, we'd propose to put in. So that's just a glimpse. And, and so what we're asking today is that you recommend to the County Commission that we proceed to stage two where business plans, agreements, all the things would roll out. We um, don't foresee, you know, anybody really objecting to this. We think everybody's going to rejoice when they see this plan and it hits the public, but you never know till you get there. We've, we've tried to think of everything, but as these projects go, you never quite think of everything, but we, we feel pretty solid about uh, and, and firm with what we've done and, and sure, we're going to tweak it and move around a little bit. Yeah, but there's a lot of moving parts to this to bring back in stage two. So thank you guys. And I'll answer some questions, Dave, if you if you have some questions. Thank you, Mike. I actually have. 
Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, oh. Stephanie. Oh, that was all. I just wanted to thank him for the thorough presentation. Oh, okay. All right. I got a bunch of questions that came sure. out of that. Uh, okay. uh, the first of all, the first one is, would it be kind of um, uh, reasonable or something? So this is like a new golfer training and development center then. Would that be a good way to think of it? You know, I think my CPA that keeps me out of jail and does my taxes and stuff for our company, he said it best. He said, and this is a guy who was a, a cart boy at Wild Creek when it opened, mm -hmm. University of Nevada graduate. He said, this is going to be the place to start and finish. And, okay. yeah. and, and we do. We have a lot of 90-year-olds and elderly yeah. that play the par three course. And it's, and it, but it's going to be a learning place. I would call it a, a you know, that's why we propose the Patty Sheehan Learning Center. Yeah. And, center there. Yeah. And that's first key that's going to be doing that, that development or the development center you just mentioned. Uh-huh. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, I don't know. Uh, what is the advantage to the county for doing a deed versus uh, versus a lease on uh, the buildings? You know, uh, I think the lease would be really, really, really low. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm talking a dollar a year, but we'll have to negotiate that. Yeah. Um, the the thing is, is you know when you you have the public ownership and you have to bid things and, mm -hmm. and follow all of the NRS code and, mm -hmm. and you know it puts another layer in there and it, prevailing wage, all the things that come with that make this project for three million dollars you couldn't do very much and. You know, doing it the way we're doing it with all the connections I have first tee nationally with 141 chapters in every state, every major city. Um, nationally, they have agreements with companies like Toro Turf Products and Irrigation, uh, Wadsworth mm -hmm. Instruction, who builds golf courses, has a foundation called Links Across America, who we've been in contact with that do projects specifically for nonprofits and, and communities that are trying to provide affordable golf and first tee programming. You can't do stuff like that when you're working in the public sector. You know, you really have to be, and, and fundraising is a lot different when you're at making an ask for another foundation versus a, mm. a municipality. So so first tee, would, it would be first tee you're giving the, uh, the deed to. Oh, absolutely, yeah. 100%. Yeah. If they're a 501c3 and they would, they would okay. hire me, and if I don't do a good job, they kick me out and hire somebody else. So, Dave, do you see that the advantage being the county that we can get this program done uh, by doing the the deed versus the lease? Uh, you know, um, Commissioner Shorts, I don't know what the best vessel is. I mean, you know, part of step two is to get the district attorney's office involved to really verify and vet okay. through to make sure that, you know, deed versus a lease, we can do what, you know, what, uh, what the group has, has proposed to us. I know that there's some strong feelings, you know, we, we're not trying to circumvent any laws or anything like that, but certainly the next phase is to go through and really dot all those I's and cross those T's and really understand all of those different things. So whether it's a lease or whether it's a, a we deed the property, you know, I've also spoken a little bit with the city of Sparks as well. The city of Sparks is, you know, very interested in making sure that this property in perpetuity is open space or a golf course or something along those lines. Um, so, you know, all of these things start to roll in together to be something that is good for our community going into the future. So whatever that vessel is, we'll have to, we'll have to go through that in, in phase two. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, so you're, uh, Mike, you are saying that the uh, uh, first key would likely be uh, bringing some of their national programs here. Uh, uh, do we have a lot of competition for that? Uh, uh, this is a one of a kind program in the community. Um, I, I was the founder and helped start the first tee in 1999 here. And the way the first tee, it's like a franchise, if you will. You know, mm -hmm. and they have, it's the first tee Northern Nevada. Yeah. And there are some other junior programs out there, but first tee is uh, very unique. And I'd encourage you to Google first tee Northern Nevada and look at the programs. But every mm -hmm. the kids move through different levels, par, birdie, eagle, and, and so on. And and their age is seven to 17. They do now have some little linkers, they call them the four and five and six year olds. But every lesson at the golf course has a golf skill and a life skill. Yeah, and I would, I would assume that this, the uh, par, par three call it course it was is what would be good to train or. Uh, right, right. Okay. 
we see them starting there. And as they move from par to birdie level, they get over on the big course, having their own driving range tee where we can have kids programming that's not going to really upset the public hitting, you know, things like that. Right now, first tees at all the courses in the area, Greg, and they they get three spots on the range while the range is open. And it's really hard to do programming. And, and you know, they always feel like guests. It's not like they're yeah, not, they're, they're it's spot. a whole different deal, you know, and, and, and attitude basically. And, yeah. and I don't mean to barge in, but, uh, I'd like to introduce <laughs> myself, uh, Mike, Mike did earlier, but I'm, I'm Travis Hanson. I'm the board chair for the first tee. Um, one thing I wanted to touch on, um, going back a little bit is, um, I, I'm in commercial real estate as my day job. Um, mm -hmm. very passionate about golf, but I, I think on, you know, just on a simple level, a lease versus uh, a deed. Um, it, I think Mike touched on a little bit, but number one, I, I think it'd be really hard for us to, you know, invest to the level we want to for, for these clubhouses and, you know, and, and have a, maybe a shorter term lease where it just, the, the money really just doesn't pencil out for, uh, for mm -hmm. the, for, for the risk we would be taking on. Um, and then secondarily, as Mike just pointed out, out on the programming side at the other courses, I think as we, as our, as our participants get older, mm -hmm. um, what we're finding out is, and one of the, while we, while we are, you know, the best ranked uh, program in the country, our biggest challenge is we're losing older participants because they, they want access to the course. And, mm -hmm. you know, at Washoe, golf courses in, in Washoe County in general, we, we just, we're, we're losing that access. And, you know, the pandemic has really shown that people, everyone wants to be outside and play and, and golf course operators that they've been great to us, but they also, they have to make money too. Yeah. And so um, just want to throw my, my two cents here. So I appreciate you guys, uh, everyone's time and I'll, I'll let Mike get back to it. Um, one question again for Dave is, um, uh, I see we're doing three parts and your idea today is for us to uh, recommend to the county that they move on with, uh, with phase two. Uh, would you then consider this to be the report to us for phase one, uh, you know, in a technical sense, or are we going to get something else? Uh, yeah, no, yeah, no, great question, uh, Commissioner Shorts. Uh, this, this really becomes kind of a, that report to you all for this phase one. I've got to then take this to the Board of County Commissioners as well, based on your action today. Um, so yeah, this, this is a kind of a weird uh, uh, policy. The way it's set up is really everything goes to the Board of County Commissioners. But since this is park specific, um, I, there was a, a couple of other ones that, that went through the process and didn't come to this to this board uh okay. and so i want to make sure that we we, we go to this board first um yeah. from now on so. no if 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 i was uh uh expecting another report i'd want to see see that before uh moving on with the uh the recommendation uh and then of course mike i have to ask you one question how do you guys deal with the marmots you know it, it's uh we don't have any marmots at sierra sage there's no cover for them and the coyotes pretty much take care of them but you know, Wild Creek, there was a lot, and they moved so much dirt and built so much. We haven't seen very many of them lately. You know, they don't have as much cover as they had, um, but you know, they're they're going to be around up there because they're they're they don't dig. They go into the rocks, and whenever you pile a rock, mm -hmm. there's going to be marmots. So we expect to have some at Wild Creek, but not like you see at Wolf Run or Lake Ridge. Okay, they don't have the cover there. They're out in the open too much. You might call me a marmot enthusiast. There's a lot of them. You go to Lake Ridge and Wolf Run and they collect them. All right. Well, I, I do want to say that, um, you know, her, hearing your report today and what you had to say uh, has taken me uh, from being, uh, you know, it's golf, uh, you know, I know golf, uh, uh, to being actually an enthusiast about what you're trying to do. So thank you for what you have uh, uh, shown here today. Appreciate it. Thank you. Stephanie, this is Doug Doolittle. I have some questions for Mike. Okay. Mike, how are you? Good. How are you, Doug? Good to see you. Right. Good to see you. Listen, I want to thank you and uh, Dale for uh, coming to the county with a proposal. I, I, it's good to see that golf course uh, have a, a future. Uh, the land's been um, underused 
as you well know, for the last several years. So it's good to go forward on that. I, I do have a couple of questions on, on the, um, first on the architect, what is the role of the architect beyond the uh, uh, initial redesign? Is he part of that team? It kind of was brought up as, as a three, three pronged effort. Is it just you and first he, or is he also part of the effort? Yeah, Brian Curley, you know, I, I didn't know him, um, Doug, and uh, through a, a mutual friend who he did some work for, he made an introduction and I called Brian and I told him, look, we want to do this project, but it's, it, we have to propose it, take it through a process. It may never come to fruition and I don't want to pay you a bunch of money, but do you have any, uh, do you have a soft spot maybe for something like First Tee and, and affordable public golf? And he did. And I kind of went after Brian Curley because Nicholas once called him the most creative and the smartest golf course architect on the planet. And I knew we had a tight area there and I was reaching high because Brian's very expensive and he does more international work. He's probably built 30 courses in Palm Springs, but he's an under the radar kind of vagabond world traveler that's just really, really creative. And he's indicated he's going to do this project for a much smaller fee than he normally charges, which that was part of our initial agreement. But he's, he wants to be on site all the way through. He, his office is in Phoenix. He has a place in Southern Cal too, and he'll, he'll be on site weekly. And through he and I, we'll manage the construction, of course, do you know voucher control and all the things that come along with managing a project of this scope. But um, Brian's excited because if this comes to fruition, he can he can be involved in that whole process. And, and he's 60 years old and, and has tons of experience. And, and usually he hands his plans off to an architect and it doesn't always come out exactly like they want. And, and so he's excited. And, and so it'll really be Curly Schmidt design, me and first he working together to bring it, you know, through. I'm, I'm aware of Brian and I, I really applaud you bringing on that level of expertise to take on a project like this. That, that says a lot for what you're doing. You. Uh, question on your current operations. What, what will be the impact to your operations at Sierra, Sierra Sage? Are you going to be mainly focused on uh, getting Wild Creek up and going or are you going to be um, situated at Sierra Sage and, and I, or are you going to be able to split your time and be able to manage both yeah, you know, it's, um, you know, you look at different operators and I, I'm not the kind of operator I want to have a bunch of courses. I want to have a course or two and do a really good job. And this summer when we opened up in July, there was no, uh, you know, no denying it. It was difficult because of COVID. Most of the golf courses have experienced larger volume because people feel safe outdoors and playing golf and my typical day would be I'd go to Sierra Sage, make things, sure things are running good, and then turn my hat around to the Wild Creek logo and head down the hill. But they're not that, I live in Golden Valley, and if I come out of my driveway and turn right, I go to Wild Creek, I turn left, I go to Sierra Sage. So I'm gonna spend kind of equal time at both places. I have no ambition or ideas to pick up any other golf. This is all, I wanna focus on public golf. And I just, I felt like, it was time to dig in and fight for uh, something special for this community public golf wise. Again, I appreciate it. This is kind of a technical question, Dave, but when, Mike, when you talked about the drainage off the school, uh, do, does the school district have a drainage easement across the golf course currently? No, and it's, they, Dave would know more, um, but they, they basically don't go through the, the, the same planning process everybody else does. But, you know, Wild Creek has always collected water down on that south end and and those lakes were full of reclaimed. And I knew if we built a course down there and had reclaimed water in those lakes and it ever discharged off site, we we're gonna be in trouble with NDEP. So that's why we worked and tried to develop this range. And there actually is some grant money available possibly from uh, the state and, and federal because of what we're doing with the water management. So we didn't need to do that, but I think either the county or school district will thank us later that we're going to manage the water to the south of the high school because that's a lot of parking and a lot of runoff from roofs and so forth coming out of there. 
Yeah, you. I mean, yeah. I Commissioner Doolittle. Go ahead. Go ahead, Dave. Yeah, I was just gonna. I just gonna let you know. You know, under Nevada state law, the school district had to design their project so that the post-development flows were no different than the pre-development flows. So, you know, we, we, we've reviewed all of their plans and everything else with the property and the impacts, and, and we feel very, uh, you know, secure that, that they've done what they needed to do in the design of their project. Um, however, you know, uh, Mike's right, there's, there's, you know, you design to a certain level and you're always going to see something more. I fully expect this golf course to get wet regardless of, you know, uh, how great the design is of the school district only because of what's flowing from Sun Valley all the way down. So uh, I think this, you know, that design of the, of the uh, you know, as proposed with the driving range ability to get wet is the appropriate way to go with this property. Okay, thanks, Dave. And I know going into stage three that you're going to get into uh, more of the uh, particulars related to terms of the lease and, and uh, or deeds or whatever the case may be. So I, I, I'm going to hold off any questions related to that. But uh, uh, again, Mike, I, I applaud you for coming forth with the uh, um, proposal. Uh, good luck with it and uh, um, appreciate your time. Thank you, Doug. Uh, this is Darla Lee. Mike, I, I really appreciate your report. And I have to say it's been, for many of us, a long time coming. We've anticipated that the first tee would be, you know, at Wild Creek. And, uh, you know, for the, the, the area to have this kind of a facility would be what we've all been wanting for quite a while. And, and especially in keeping it open space and with the new design with the driving range, uh, just it's looking, you know, very promising. And, and we're hopeful uh, all of the neighborhood around Wild Creek. Uh, and especially since we've got the Hug High, you have some ready-made first tee people right there, obviously. I do have a question about the, since First Tee would be taking over the clubhouse, so does that mean that they would continue the, the uh, cafe and that's the other facilities that are there or were there? I, I know that the, the restaurant is closed now, but in that regard, is that going to be something that will continue or not? Yeah, um, Darla, thank you. Um, we foresee, you know, in the preliminary discussions, and, and Travis Hansen can chime in here, that the lower level of that building being some retail restrooms, bar and restaurant, and the first T uh, facilities and learning classroom type environment upstairs. And, right. and so, but we see that building really with a complete makeover. It won't, I mean, it, it would literally probably be gutted and, and redesigned and First team might have their own entrance on the outside of the, you know, a lot of ideas around, but we'll, we'll get a golf uh, or a, a structural engineer and an architect involved. We, our preliminary look at the building, it has good bones, but it's built in the seventies, you know, right. and, and it needs a major facelift and, and, you know, new mechanical, new electrical. So yeah, but we, we foresee having um, some, some food and beverage there. That's great. Well, thank you again. We are thrilled to have, and, and hopefully this will go forward faster than, <laughs> than it's been up to this point. Thank you. Meanwhile, you can come play six holes or the par three till we get going. <laughs> All right, great, thank you. This is Heidi Anderson. I have a few questions as well. Um, and so first, thank you. Very excited to see um, some positive stuff coming for golf and um, wish Bonnie Ford was here to see this because um, we miss her. But a uh, quick question around public input. It sounded like um, there hasn't, hasn't gone out to the public much yet. Is that something that'll be in your plan to get feedback from them as well? Yeah, Heidi, we, in the proposal, we said, look, we can do a town hall meeting. We can do a survey, you know, of, of the locals. Uh, I was very involved in the Save Wild Creek, um, you know, coalition before the, the deal with the uh, school district. You know, 
And I knew the high school was coming. My whole deal from the beginning was, hey, let's see what we can. And the original design of the high school was it was going to be down on the Cairn. And all the steep terrain up there wouldn't have been able, we wouldn't have been able to do something like this. So I think most of the, I know most of those folks and most of them are close by residents, you know, up on the hill and on Wetakin and, and that, that side. I think we're going to have a lot, a lot of support. And, you know, I've been looking for somebody that, that would oppose what we've, we've proposed and I haven't seen anybody yet. And, and I think um, the county and, and all the players are going to hear nothing but praise to the approach that we're trying to take here. Wonderful, great. Um, I think that's all I have for now. I'll save my other questions around deeds and leases um, until that comes up later. So thank you very much. Looking forward to seeing more. Thank you. Great questions and discussion. Um, this item is up for possible action. Would anyone like to make a motion? I believe there's a motion in the staff report. I'd like to make a motion. Um, basically, I'm not sure how to do it, though. I, I, shall I just read? So I would like to see this proposal go to stage two, the unsolicited proposal policy by completing all necessary documents, including leases and a term sheet for the proposal from Mass Golf Management for the continuation of golf operations at Wild Creek Golf Course. Is that good? Doug Doolittle, I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Oppose? Okay, motion passes. Thank you everyone. And thank you Mike for that presentation and answering our questions. Thank you guys for having Travis and I appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, we will go ahead and move on to item eight. Um, Commissioner yeah. Chen, can, oh, I, yes. can I jump in for just a second? Sorry, this yes. is Kathy. Um, Commissioner Jung would like the commission to know that she's having technical difficulties and can't join in on the meeting. Okay. Thank you for that update, Kathy. Sure. Um, do we have an Eagle Scout presentation today? Okay, I'm not hearing anything, so I'm thinking no. We will go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Colleen. No, no, my apologies. Uh, for the record, Colleen Wallace Barnum, no Eagle Scout presentation today. Okay, perfect. Thank you. We'll move on to item nine, program park of the month update, and that's going to be presented by um, Celia Walker. All right, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Celia Walker. Can you hear me okay here? Okay, great. Uh, Ranger to Peavine District, and I'm based out of Rancho San Rafael. Um, I'm gonna share my screen here. Here we go. Let me know if you can see it. It looks good. You might want to start um, run it from the beginning and then we'll be able to see full screen. There we go. Okay, so this year is, uh, has been a little crazy as everyone knows and all of our programming was pretty much canceled this year uh, for the summer. And so here at Rancho San Rafael um, my ranger partner, Bob Holland and I, you know, we thought, well, you know, what can we do here that's a little bit different, might bring some joy to some people. Um, so Urban Roots is usually here every summer doing their gardening program for kids. Uh, this year, um, they had to cancel their programming this year. So we have this area within the Nevada Farms and Families area at Rancho San Rafael. It used to be the Great Basin Adventure Park. 
So they pulled out and, you know, we had this, you know, pretty much a big weed patch there. And we thought, well, let's do something good with this area. Uh, we were donated 150 pumpkin seeds. And so we had the Arboretum start them in their greenhouse and we planted all of them and we spread um, a half acre of sunflower seeds here uh, with the idea, you know, we can share the sunflowers and maybe we can have a pumpkin patch um, to make use of the space. So it really took off and we had some great volunteers and everyone was really into this project. Um, by August, we had, you know, pumpkins growing and a full sunflower patch. It was really pretty down there. And so we decided, how can we share all these sunflowers? So we went and we picked all of them into bouquets, um, myself and my ranger partners. And we decided to bring them to all seniors. We thought, well, they might love, you know, a little bit of uh, something good when they pick up their lunches for the day. So we went to St. Vincent's, uh, we went to the senior center at 9th Street there during um, the lunch pickup. And we went to Summit Ridge and Park Place Assisted Living and just dropped off all the bouquets for them to give out. And then in October, uh, we had our pumpkin patch. It was, it was really a lot of fun. Uh, we did, we hosted the kids cottage at Rancho and we decorated all the pumpkins. We played games. Um, we had about 12 kids from kids cottage and along with all their staff, uh, they were totally excited. We even did, you know, what sounds will make the turkeys talk, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, we picked all the we picked all the pumpkins and they decorated them and they built this scarecrow they named No Name. And I couldn't take pictures of all the kids, even though I wanted to. So I just took pictures of our volunteers. We've started an awesome volunteer program in the Nevada Farms and Families area. And they were all really happy to help out. Um, any of the leftover pumpkins we brought to Casa de Vida and they have some families living there. They were really excited to receive all of those. And then this December, uh, for about 12 years now, we've been doing a program called Christmas Trees for Special Families event. And every year we go to Galena Forest. We partner with the Forest Service, um, our Community Service Department and Washoe County Parks. Ranger Andy down there, you know, tags about 60 trees that we cut down as Christmas trees. And it's also, it's a win-win because it's a fire break, fuels reduction in the forest. And then we get to give them away to foster families and military families here in the Truckee Meadows area. Uh, and yeah, we had to do things a little different this year. We had everyone RSVP for a time slot. We had two different places for them to pick up their tree. And the Girl Scouts totally came through for us this year. Um, they made over a dozen different ornament takeaways. And um, even a board, you see the picture on the lower right there, a board that shows each ornament. Um, and families were so excited. We put together, you know, takeaway hot cocoa and candy cane packets, and they got to meet Santa and ranger elves. And then we had volunteers help out with that as well. Um, and we have so we had so many ornament takeaways. We have enough for next year. So it was it was just a really good community event. And people were so happy to get uh, fresh trees. They, you know, kept emailing back to me saying how thankful they were, and they sent pictures of their families as well. Um, 
one little girl, she told Santa, all I want for Christmas to see my friends, which everyone just started crying. But it was just, um, you know, just some feel good projects that we did this year in place of other things. So that's it. Just happy to share it. Thank you, Celia, for the presentation. It's great that you were able to repurpose a space and share the bounty of sunflowers and pumpkins with the community. And really, kudos for the creativity and programming you were able to accomplish. Thanks. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was fun. Yeah, this, no, this, go, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Whoever's. No, I, I, I was, yeah. <laughs> was going to ask Celia, where where exactly in the in what location was the this uh yeah it's the, the yeah it's the nevada farms and families area so right next to the may museum it used okay. to be Earth base and adventure park uh do you right. know where the, do you know where the okay. turkeys are yeah okay right. okay it's That's right behind where the turkeys are yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah wonderful job you guys did just wonderful that was a great project and i uh, so especially this past year people really needed yeah. a lot of <laughs> a little bit of joy in their lives so thank you very much that was that great. was the goal yeah yeah this is this is doug doolittle again i, I just want to echo what darla had just said uh great program so yeah i mean really great to have you entertaining the community as you have by presenting programs that they can all get involved in. So congratulations, keep it up. Don't stop with those programs, keep, keep them going. Everybody need, needs it right now. Yeah, for sure. And I think they'll need it in the future too. So yes. <laughs> we'll keep it going. Thank you, Celia. Great job. I'm glad you got to highlight some of the fun things you, you got to do at Burt Rancho this year. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was good to think outside the box. What can we still do? <laughs> Thank you, Celia, for joining us today. We appreciate it. Thank you. We'll go ahead and move on to item 10, parks reports. Okay, uh, for the record, Colleen Wallace Barnum, Park Operations Superintendent. Um, just a few things to highlight. Um, I did wanna let you know that we have had um, an additional retirement this year. Um, park Ranger John Kesey, he's a Park Ranger too. Actually worked for Washoe County for 21 plus years. Uh, just retired, his last day was January 2nd. Um, so we had um, an interview process in the middle of December, and I would like to thank Commissioner Oliver for her, um, her assistance. She was a panel member for that interview, so thanks for doing that for us. Um, and uh, we're excited to get that position filled. So um, we will continue with the hiring. Just wanted to make sure you knew we did that. And then Bartley Ranch um, Park, and then also the Reno Sports Complex, kind of the north end of Rancho over there by the Basque Monument are two areas for recycling Christmas trees. Uh, we partner with KTMB to, um, as a host site um, to take those Christmas trees and then we mulch them and use that mulch um, in some of our parks. So that is still going um, on through Sunday, January 10th. So if you still haven't dropped off your Christmas tree, if you have one or you know anybody that has one, they can still get it there. Um, Sunday, January 10th is the last day. And there are a few things that are not on the reports that I want to make sure that I was getting back to everybody on. Um, I know in October we were discussing after several of the um, presentations, we were discussing the potential of doing a joint commission meeting, park commission meeting with the city of Reno, city of Sparks and Washoe County. I did reach out to the cities of Reno and Sparks, both Jamie Schroeder, who's the director over there and then Tony Pele, who is the um, acting director for City of Sparks. Um, just so you know, uh, they have not met, they basically met in January of 2020 and never met again in 2020. So when I had reached out to them, they were like, we haven't even had our park commission meetings regularly at all. So um, 
they both felt that doing a January or early 2020, 2021 meeting was perhaps too early for them simply because they hadn't done any meetings. So um, we're still in discussions about trying to do a potential joint meeting. Um, and then I'm hoping that we might be able to do a presentation with um, the Parks Director from City of Reno next month, Jamie Schroeder. Uh, There's some other um, things that the city's doing um, through their city council. So wanted to maybe bring that to everybody's attention just to, to keep everybody in the loop on what's going on there. But I just wanted to make sure you knew that I did have those discussions and we're still waiting to kind of get, I think back to some degree of normal meetings. Um, and then another important thing I wanted to note uh, just last week, I was in discussions with TNU Arts and Culture. That is the um, organization that we have an agreement with to bring Dragon Lights Reno to, um, to uh, the Arboretum at Rancho San Rafael Park. And they have canceled the event for 2021. Um, right now, the US consulate uh, is not allowing for visas for um, any, anybody from China. And those would be the Chinese artisans that we would be bringing over to actually create the, the lanterns. So right now, based on that, in addition to just a really not knowing where we're gonna be at come June, July, um, we felt it was probably best to hold off and then hopefully they'll come back in 2022. Uh, we do have an agreement. We signed a five-year agreement with them. So we actually can have that event up through uh, 2023 with our current agreement, just so you're aware. And then, um, you know, because they canceled, Rancho is just a popular place. Um, our town has already reached out and they are interested in potentially using Rancho San Rafael for some of their, um, you know, their premier um, events because Rancho has a lot of space and uh, if we're still in the, you know, the situation of having distance, um, we have some space there that they're hoping to be able to utilize for some concerts. So just so you know that that might be coming up in future meetings. Um, and then I just want to make sure you knew there are a couple of park staff that have been reassigned to the health district uh, just for a couple of months. Um, but uh, the COVID-19 vaccination program has been rolling out. I'm sure you've been seeing a lot of information in the news about it. Um, but I did want to say that I just want to thank those staff for, you know, really putting aside their regular duties and uh, taking on these additional responsibilities. So um, just want to make sure you knew about that. And otherwise, do you have any questions on any additional information in the report? Yeah, I do have, Colleen. This is Doug Doolittle. Is there any possibility of having uh, Jamie, uh, when she comes over, to? is she going to give a presentation or is she just going to appear to answer any questions that are going on in the city of Reno? Because Scion Park is just being developed almost completed. And that's a pretty good sized park that meets the needs of many residents in Washoe County, not just city of Reno. And it'd be nice if she could give a short presentation on that for people that may be watching our commission and it'd be an update of, of some sorts. Yeah, I can certainly ask her um, to maybe, you know, highlight some of their um, ongoing projects. Yeah, okay, great, thanks. Maybe one last thing, if you haven't heard it enough, Colleen, thank you for doing such a great job directing all the people that you you uh, uh, supervise and, and work with because they, they're offering programs that are, are really benefiting many people in the community, so thanks. Thank you, Doug. I'm proud to be a part of a, a great dedicated team. Thanks. Thank you, Colleen, for the updates. Yeah. Well, I'm um, hearing um, no more questions. We'll go ahead and move on to item 11, the director's report. Yes, hi, for the record, Eric Crump uh, with Washoe County's Community Services Department. Um, Mr. Solero had to step out of the meeting. So uh, the board did hear a few items uh, over the last couple of months on October 27th. The board, uh, we accepted a grant of $45,000 from the Community Foundation of Western Nevada, uh, and that is for weed management throughout um, our park system uh, related to or close to the Truckee River. 
Uh, and then on December 8th, we accepted a $40,000 grant from the Rec Trails program uh, through the state uh, for the Thomas Creek to Bowardini Ranch trail connection. So uh, two important grants that will help us do uh, great things for this community. Um, so with that, uh, that, that are all the action items uh, that the board took. And there are no other updates, but I'd be happy to answer any questions. Eric, I got a quick question. This is uh, Commissioner Shorts. Uh, quick question. I was looking through the numbers on the golf uh, 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 on the uh, golf courses, uh, not Wild Creek, the other two, and uh, we're making a, a lot more money than we have in other uh, previous years. Uh, I was just wondering, how does that affect budgeting, and where does that money? How does that run around? Is that uh, put back into the golf course general fund? How does that work? Uh, so it's a great question, um, and we can certainly bring uh, the the two agreements. So we have currently we have uh, Maz Golf who operates Sierra Sage in a short term contract that actually has a kind of a different funding mechanism over at Wild Creek, and then Washoe Golf uh, we have um, uh, Bellman Golf who operates um, that golf course. Um, they do pay a fee to the county. Um, obviously, and that, that fee goes into what's called the golf fund. It is a restricted account, uh, and it's used for things that aren't covered, uh, under the agreement. Uh, we actually used some of that money, um, over at Wild Creek, uh, between the transition from the previous operator and the new operator. There's some things that needed to be done. We needed to continue maintenance of the golf course, continue to protect our assets. So we were able to hire a few seasonals to uh, to maintain that golf course. Uh, so um, we made some improvements to uh, a well pump out at Sierra Sage recently that was damaged and it wasn't the responsibility of the um, of the operator. So uh, there is some revenue that gets funneled from both of those operators and goes into the golf fund. Uh, I'm not uh, exactly sure how much is in the golf fund right now, but we could certainly bring a report back to you uh, to show you the revenue side on the county side. Uh, I, I personally don't need any additional information. I was just curious okay. about how that was working out. So, so thank you. Sure. Yeah, and golf is, is, has, was doing very well um, during the summer and fall. Thank you, Eric, for the update. Okay, we'll go ahead and move on to um, item 12, commissioner's comments. I have none. Okay, I'm seeing some head nods, all right. Um, item 13, public comments. We do not have any public comment. Thank you, Katie. All right, we will go ahead and adjourn the meeting at 3.49 p.m. Thank you, everyone, for joining today. See you next month. Thank you.